Uh, it's well known the Greeks invented the conflict, invented the idea of the conflict between the barbarian and the West. And yet the Greeks from the very beginning always made that problematic as to what is barbarian and what is Greek. Uh, from the very beginnings of Greek literature, you look at uh, uh, Homer's Iliad, Book 24, when Priam and uh, Achilles, the Greek and the barbarian, Priam, sit down to dinner and each weep their, their personal sorrows and appreciate each other as, as human beings. That's the very beginning of Western literature, the very beginning of Greek literature, and it's aware that there's an awareness there that uh, the Greek is just as human as the barbarian, and that the distinctions between them really are artificial and are man-made. Uh, so even though the Greeks could be very incredibly chauvinistic about their culture, and I mean the very word barbarian is one of the most chauvinistic words there is because it means literally people that go bar, 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 who can't talk Greek. In other words, you can't speak Greek, you're a barbarian. Uh, the Greeks certainly were, were, were very self-satisfied in general that their their democratic ways are superior to the autocratic ways of the barbarian East. And yet, what is so remarkable about them is their awareness that uh, all human beings really are one, no matter what their, their, uh, their uh, conflicts may be, their political conflicts may be. And uh, they, they, they are quite aware that, 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 that all of humanity is, is pretty much the same. Though, though politics may divide us, our common humanity unites us. And that's there in Greek literature from the beginning of Homer with the Iliad, and it's certainly there in the earliest play we have, Aeschylus's The Persians is uh, a play about the defeat of, of the Persian Empire. The Persians had sacked Athens, had destroyed it. There probably still was smoke issuing from the ruins on the top of the Acropolis in 472 when the Persians premiered. And yet Aeschylus writes of tragedy from the point of view of the defeated Persians who had tried to defeat and enslave the Greeks. And the, the grandeur of the play, morally and intellectually, I think is not that it's it's not certainly not a rah rah Greeks you you really kick those Persians butts though on one level of course the, there's there is something of that sentiment behind the play obviously Aeschylus is proud that his civilization outnumbered as they were were able to defeat the Persians but it is saying that there but for the grace of God go we uh, Aeschylus I think knows the Persians just like the, the Athenians or the Greeks in general could create it could create an empire and could lose a perception of themselves as human beings, could fall victim to hubris, and that when we lose a, a sense of the boundaries of what is human, when we lose perception of, the, the, uh, of our own natural limitations, that's when we get into real serious trouble as human beings. And Aeschylus is the Persians, the first drama to survive from antiquity, uh, is about really the, 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 the the common threads that bond humanity together, even though you may be on very opposite sides of the political spectrum. Uh, Aeschylus was able to write an effective tragedy uh, showing the, the tremendous Athenian victory that assured the, the survival of Western civilization, but he was able to portray that from the eyes of the defeated, from the eyes of his enemy. Think how long it's taken in America for us to make a movie that portrayed the Japanese in World War II as human beings. When I'm thinking of Clint Eastwood made several films, you know, Letters from Iwo Jima, and uh, uh, I think some other films that he did that were portraying the war through the eyes of the Japanese. The, uh, you know, the Japanese Empire was as was as dangerous and horrible as what Hitler had created in Germany, but they were human beings just as much as we are. And it's taken us nearly 60, 70 years to be able to make a film showing, uh, showing the war from their perspective. And they're showing us their tragedy. Uh, and uh, the Greeks were just, what, six or seven years away from the Persian Wars when they made, they, they not only did Aeschylus present the Persians, but it was on a winning bill at the city Dionysia. That's a remarkable depth of humanity on Aeschylus's part. He was under no illusion that these people were his friends 
or that there should have not the 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 the, 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 the Greeks should have been supine before the the Persian invasion. Uh, what we know about Aeschylus is that his tombstone uh, bragged of his uh, service during the Persian Wars. Didn't mention his, his his work as a playwright or as a poet, but only mentioned being a a warrior at Marathon. But he is aware that the people he defeated were human beings uh, just like himself. And that what happened to the Persians could happen to anyone. And that if you lose that perspective, uh, you lose a sense of what it is to be fully human. And I think that that's part of what Greek civilization gives to us, if we care to explore it, is it is an expression of being human.